Good morning, I'm the Rookie Gold Prospector. This is my first time prospecting, but before I get my shovels dirty, let's look around and see if we can find signs that there's actually gold here. Here's a sign. Here's a sign. Here's a sign. Here's another pretty good sign. This is the entrance to one of the properties that I'll be mining and prospecting on. And you'll notice that there's a locked gate. That's because this is a private property and I have permission to be here. I have unlimited access to do just about anything I want within certain guidelines. These are some of the posted rules that I must follow. No undermining or digging in the banks. No carrying of firearms on the physical person. And violators will be terminated. And we don't want to be terminated, so uh, let's make sure we follow those rules. Well, I almost drove past this, but uh, figured I'd stop and take a look. It's just a deep hole. It's filled with water. It's probably the entrance to an old mine, but I can't say for sure, but that's the most likely conclusion. Right next to that flooded mine, there is what appears to be a big tailings pile. And it's definitely a recent tailings pile, and you can tell that somebody's been digging here. But I think it'll still be worth checking out. Now here's the foundation of an old structure that I just came across. It's a concrete foundation, and I'm not an expert in dating concrete, but um, you can tell it's made out of the materials that are found here locally. I'm not sure how old it is. The Georgia Gold Rush started in 1828, so I'm not sure if this is from that time period or if it's more modern, but the Gold Rush here ended in about 1848 when everybody went out to California to uh, mine out there. Um, next to this foundation, you can see it's totally covered with moss here. There's another uh, do not enter area. And there's obviously a hole there. And it's filled in, so I'm not sure if it was a ventilation shaft or an actual entrance to the mine, but I doubt it was just a ventilation shaft because of this foundation right here next to it. So I'm not really sure what it is, um, but this is where I'm going to get out and get my gear out and head down the hill. I saw a nice stream. So let's go down there and check it out. Well, I finished carrying all my gear down that big hill about 100 yards away from here. I got all my gear down here and I just wanted to show you guys real quick what I brought with me. I got a full size shovel, got some buckets, got various pans and classifier screens. I got a spoon and a snuffer bottle for sucking up the gold out of the pan got a little scoop here and a digging tool looks like a big knife but it's classified as a digging tool it's got some serrated edges on there for digging so hopefully that'll work pretty well I got this little tub here that I can use to uh, pan in if I'm not sitting right next to the creek um, this right here is a backpack sluice box, so I'll open that up a little bit later and show you what I got going on in there. And the water's freezing cold today, and I'm gonna play around in the water anyway, so I have a nice pair of waders that I'm going to use here in a little bit. Uh, I got a bunch of hand tools as well. I got a little rock pick, I got some, uh, shovels and rakes, um, various little crevicing tools uh, like this so I can dig into rock crevices. And I got some uh, some wire brushes here that I can use uh, also to brush off the bedrock. And that's what we've got today. So let's go ahead and get these waders on and get down in there and start doing some prospecting. Actually, before I get started, I just wanted to uh, say a couple things here. Everything I know about mining, I learned on YouTube. I'm completely inexperienced, and this is my first time. And I just wanted to mention a couple of the channels that have really taught me a lot and helped me get going. So uh, the first one is Dan Hurd from Dan Hurd Prospecting. Dan really has a lot of fun. You should check out his channel. He's an experienced miner, and he can show you a lot of different techniques that you can use to help you get started. Um, so go check him out. 
Um, the next channel I want to talk about is Mount Baker Mining and Metals. This channel is MBMMLLC. Uh, you should check him out. He is a professional miner. He actually builds and sells um, large-scale mining equipment for hard rock mining operations. And uh, he knows a lot about prospecting for hard rock gold, which we're going to do some of while we're out here. And um, if you like to see molten metal being poured and precious metals being refined, it's pretty cool to watch. So you should check out his channel as well. And uh, last but not least is Lost River Gold, Gems, and Mining. And um, if it wasn't for that channel, I never would have even known that there was gold in this region. I saw some of his videos, and he was working in South Carolina and Georgia, which is where I am now. And uh, that got this whole snowball happening here that got me out into this hobby, and that's why I'm here right now. So thank you to Lost River Gold, Gems, and Mining, uh, Dan Hurd Prospecting, and Mount Baker Mining and Metal. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of look at the way this creek runs, see what type of erosion there is, what type of rocks, what type of soil, which is mostly going to be red clay full of mica, um, which is going to make it kind of challenging to pan. But you can see where this erosion has happened. There's a layer up in there. It looks like some old cobble or old tailings, not sure which. I'm sure somewhere in there is a layer of false bedrock that... Um, I could probably take a look at, but this is actual bedrock right here, which uh, makes me think that not very far down is also bedrock. This bedrock here, not sure what kind of rock it is, but it feels like clay, and actually you can just kind of push it apart. Maybe it is clay, I don't know. But it comes apart pretty easy. Normally that would be where you uh, want to look for gold is some decomposing bedrock, but uh, we can't dig into the bank here. So uh, we're going to move on upstream and see what's going on up there. So uh, one thing for me to look at is um, there's chunks of rock that are mostly quartz that are in the river. Some relatively big ones. See how some of them kind of broken off square like that. Uh, this is what uh, Jason from Mountain Baker Mining and Metals would call float rock. So that probably means that somewhere up that hill, if we look around, eventually uh, we'll probably run into a vein of uh, quartz. Um, hopefully really mineralized, which is where gold is deposited. But anyway, uh, obviously the stream rises quite a bit um, in the flood stage, um, as you can see right here. And there's a big piece of rock right here. So when, when that flood water comes up, it makes me wonder, is it possible that, you know, some small gold could kind of be underneath the rock or right in front of the rock? Um, and I think it's worth taking a look. So uh, let me get out my shovel and do some test pans just, just to see. So, use this classifier to wash these big rocks off and get down the smaller amount of material that I can pan. Alright, so, what we're gonna do is Got the water in here, we're gonna swirl, swirl, swirl. Like this. Get rid of some of the bigger rocks. It'll make it harder to pan. And we're just gonna go like this and pull the top layer of material off. And then uh, get it to sink again. The gold sinking to the bottom. Uh, I'm already seeing some black sand, so. At least I got some heavy stuff in my pan here. See, if there's any gold in the pan, 
just gonna sink to the bottom and stay in those ripples. I'm just gonna keep moving the material around like this, tilt it forward, and pull off the top a couple layers like that. So, I'm not an expert at this. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see what I'm doing here or not, but I'm going to go ahead and twirl back like this and get down to the heaviest stuff that's at the bottom there. And there is no gold in here. So, let's move on. All right, this, this is what I hear all kinds of prospectors talking about here, is an inside bend. So, the creek goes right around the corner there. By the way, that looks like a perfect spot to set up my sluice box. I don't know, somebody may have already used that there. But this right here looks like some nice material to check at. You, you can see there's some, some bigger stuff getting dropped here by the wash, you know, when it the water's higher after the rain. So let's go ahead and give that a try. This pan is probably too big to do one-handed panning in, but I want to see if, yeah, I don't feel comfortable. I'm going to mess it up, so I'm going to put the camera down, try to get it panned all the way down, and see what we got. All right. Well, before right now, my career mining gold total was zero. Let's see if we can get that. It's definitely a piece of gold. It's too small to pick up. It's not a picker. I know it's not mica, because it doesn't matter which way I look at it. That's metal. It's bright, shiny gold. My first gold ever. Now, I don't know how well this camera's gonna zoom in, but there it is. The first gold of my entire life. We are on the board. If you see, there's like one, two, three, four colors in the pan at least. Wow. So I'm gonna use my snuffer bottle. I'm gonna suck up my first gold ever. Oh my God, this is so awesome. 
All right, I think you can see a little bit better. I don't think my, my thing's going to focus very much, but let's go ahead and put my finger down there. There you go. It's still not one to focus. But that's gold. That's some Georgia gold right there. So I know on the Gold Rush show, sometimes they'll say, oh, it's got 10 colors in the pan. Go ahead and run it. But I got five colors in the pan. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe more. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up some buckets, set up the sluice box, and see what we can get. So this is where I'm definitely going to put my sluice box. I'm sure somebody's used it before, but basically it's got a nice little drop. All the water flow is concentrated in one place, and that's really what I'm looking for. So let me get grab it and uh, set it up, and let's run some material. All right, I'm a complete sluice box rookie. So I'm the best I can, but it's actually cool out right here. You know, uh, I'm cold like this. Got some wing nuts right here. I'll put on this little uh, float. And that water flows is really fast. Alright. I'm gonna put this in on the end of the sluice box. One thing that I've learned from watching Lobster's Gold is uh, he always puts a big drop on top of the sluice box to keep it from floating away. Because that would be kind of bad to have a box full of gold and then uh, have it all just kind of float away in the sluice box. So, see what we can find here. Right. Good thing I got these waiters to run for. Alright, I'm So here's what I got. What they, what I've learned is you want this V-shape right here. You're pretty close to the middle of the box here. I'm off center just a little bit. I'm gonna try and fix that real quick. Well, it's pretty tricky to get that V right in the middle. I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I mean, I got quite a bit of flow here. So I think I'm gonna work out all right. I mean, I could have some material accumulate on one side of it. But man, we're cooking. I got the water level just about the same all the way up and down the sluice box. So I'm going to fill up some buckets of material and find some gold. Now I got this little class bar sitting on top of my bucket, and I got the bucket all the way full of water. That way when I put some big rocks in there, I can kind of shake it around and get any kind of clay or any stuff, wash off the big rocks, and the stuff I'm going to put through the sluice will fall to the bottom of the bucket. Like this. And I 
all the vigor off the nice and clean. Nice and clean. No boulder sized nuggets. That's good. Dump that out. And fill it back up again. So, it's actually pretty shocking that I've literally been here 15 minutes. I've actually prospected. And I already found some gold. My goal today was to find one speck. And we already found like six or seven specks at least. So right here in the same little spot I've been digging, you notice there's a crack down there. Now, this isn't considered the bank. That's considered the bank. So in the middle of where the water line is, I already inquired about that. So I'm cool to dig right in here. I'm gonna move a couple buckets of full of material and let's just see what we get. So I know I said I was gonna run a full bucket, but I'm super excited and I'm gonna run a half a bucket. So, but let me tell you what, this bucket's super heavy. Look how much material I got. It's classified the perfect size to run through the sluice. So let's get this bucket over the sluice and see what happens. Look how nice and clear that water is. I mean, once I start scooping this stuff in, I'll make sure there's no bubbles in these upper ripples. That'll keep the gold from falling, but if we have gold, actually should be able to see it right here once I start putting material through there. So let's, let's get her done. Got my scoop right here, my material. Let's see what happens. Let's just start. I think the best way to do it is just kind of go like that. Wash it down and just keep going. Wow, you guys missed me uh, dropping my phone in the in the river here or the stream. Before I start putting too much material, let's see what happens in these ripples. Are the ripples going to get cleaned out, or are they going to be completely clogged up with... I don't know, they're getting clogged. What am I doing wrong here? Alright. Are these ripples going to clear out? I don't know. I'm not sure, but I don't want to lose gold. And for some reason, this ripple right here is definitely cool. And I know, like, playing with the ripples is like a big no-no. But, uh, I don't really know what I'm doing. Do I need a steeper angle on this thing? Maybe that's what it is. Let me try to adjust this a little bit. Well... I got her set up a little bit better. Maybe the flow is not as much as it should be. It looks like a lot of flow, but like I said, this is my first time, so I don't know if it's enough flow or not. But let's just go ahead and keep the material in there and just see what happens. I'm gonna do it a little more slowly. That way it doesn't really build up a lot. That's time to wash the light stuff away. Good thing about having waders is you can sit in the river and run your material. I'm gonna run it a little more slowly and just kind of see. It's clean enough the ripples all right. I mean, I feel like any gold ends up in there, it's probably gonna stick around, but whoa. Actually, this right here should not be building up right here. Is it gonna free itself up? I mean, is it cool if I do this? I must not have a level. But down there, I mean, it seems all right. It's right here. I don't have the flow. Okay, something's wrong with my flow. That side's clean, this side's not. Let me see what I can do. So I got some problems here. I'm really having trouble. I think I just don't have enough flow, honestly. I mean... Let me see what I can do to get some more flow. I'm going to have to build some type of dam or something because this obviously isn't enough. 
So this is actually a lot harder than I thought. So it, it's just not clear now. And I think that either means that I have not enough flow or not enough pitch. So I got some work to do on figuring out how to do this. I'm going to go ahead and finish putting this bucket through and then do a clean out and then maybe try to find a different spot. So uh, I'll be right back. I mean, I'm, I'm really just going to kind of go a little bit slower, you know, dump the material. Not dump too much. So I'm going to this bucket out of the way so you guys can see it a little bit better. Uh, all right, so I got my rock up there, kind of holding down my sluice box. So let's go ahead and see. Keep going. God dang, this stuff is like thick. These concentrates. Just from digging, it's some heavy stuff. I haven't even... I mean, it's actually not too bad. The riffles are still getting full, but... I mean, I'm just going to keep going. In front of the water thing, man. Do it. Right. A little bit at a time. Alright. Yeah. You can tell I'm a rookie. I mean, it's cleaning up all right. It's just not enough. Right? I'm going to finish this bucket and then we're going to dry some. Uh, Just not enough flow. I'm getting impatient. <laughs> I mean, with those full ripples, it's probably just blowing gold right out of the back of the sluice box. But, I mean, we learned some of mistakes. That's about all I can do. Next time will be better. Again, if you guys have suggestions about me setting up the sluice box, what am I doing wrong? Reference the time of the video and put it in the comments and I would be very grateful. Black sand accumulating, maybe gold somehow accumulating under this little thing. Stuff. I don't know. All right, let me go ahead and the rest of it down in here. 
I'm gonna do a clean out. Good enough. Let's get her done. Right. So, what I've learned to do, I'm supposed to do, is hit at the end of the first box first. So it's level. And then, pick it up straight. So, uh, that was definitely some rookie moves right there. Um, if there was anything in here, probably not in here now but I'm gonna clean it out anyway I'm just gonna do some prospecting and panning at this point and then uh, we got some practice to do on the sluice all right so now I'm gonna go ahead and take these ripples off Okay, so I'm sure there's not any gold on here, but there could be gold in up to those each little piece of. I got this matting, or not matting, grape, whatever you call it. All right, got this one. I mean, look how packed this is full of light stuff. I mean, look at that. None of that stuff is heavy. Could be gemstones in here. One thing after I get done cleaning this out, maybe I actually did catch some gemstones. And you never know. I could actually have gold in here, which would be quite a shock. See, I know I had gold in my test pan. So Should be gold, but I may have blown it out of the box. Who knows? All right, so got my miner's moss thrown in there, and this miner's moss. You know what? I think I'm doing too much. I need to clean off what I have already. So. Give me a minute. All right, let's keep going here. Clean. Clean. And my first piece of modern moss is in here. Definitely not an expert. Anyways, the big difference between watching somebody do it on YouTube and doing it yourself. Looks clean to me. Alright. And we got this one here, which is a ton of stuff. Enough. Now this sluice interestingly has some artificial turf looking stuff over here. Tons of mica. Looks like gold but it's not.
last but not least, stick the sluice down in there. being 32 degrees outside you think this water would be colder on my hands but I think the water might be warmer than the air so uh, the next step on doing a clean out would be to classify what's in this bucket there's quite a bit of material this is what you might call concentrates but so much light stuff in there because my sluice box was not working at all. What is this? Oh, what that is, is a wing nut that, that I dumped in there. Awesome. We're gonna dump this material into here. Make sure we clean off the big rocks and get her down to the smaller stuff. Most of this is already going to go right through this plastic bag. I think I'm going to go ahead and classify it a little smaller after this. Smaller can classify easier to pan out. If there's any gemstones, it's going to be in this type of screen right here. So um, we're going to save that, put the bigger stuff in another bucket. So there's what I'm left with. That's the small stuff. I imagine there's gold that'll be in there. This is probably not going to have much in it, but I did such a horrible job with this place. Far enough to pan down. Now let's go ahead and swirl it. I don't know how some of these YouTubers do it, but I'm gonna try to do this one handed. too careful. I just want to see if there's anything in there. Um, not looking good. Actually, there's a couple tiny looks there. I mean, we're talking tiny. That's gold. And it's not mica. The way you can tell is metallic, metallic, no matter what angle you look at it from, it's definitely metallic, it's definitely gold. 
All right, I found a few pieces. You probably noticed this on the video earlier. I know I did, but always leave nature nicer than when you found it. So we're going to take this. I think we're going to get it out of this room here. We're going to clean things up just a little bit. All right. I'm just going to make sure real quick that my eyes weren't deceiving me and see if I can dump out the gold that I got so far and see if it's actually still gold in the van. Alright, there's definitely still gold in the pan. So, I wasn't imagining it, and it wasn't mica. Um, there's probably more somewhere, but there is gold.